by Foreign Trade Minister uh, Sigrid Karg, and we have Werner Baumann from Bayer joining us, and also Minakshi Gupta from India. Uh, we'll be talking to all of them, but first I want to hand over to Berger to introduce today's call. Thank you so much, uh, Adrian. Uh, good afternoon from uh, Geneva. Thank you to all of you for joining again. Uh, this call. As my colleague Adrian said, uh, we have a great panel uh, today. Um, the backdrop is still extremely serious uh, globally. Uh, based on the COVID-19 situation, uh, we're close to 5 million cases globally, close to 325,000 people that has, have died due to uh, the pandemic. We are also seeing that uh, the epicenter is moving. We have seen though in many Asian and European countries that the numbers have peaked, but we know seeing that uh, if you look at the 20 countries in the world uh, with the most new cases, 17 out of these 20 countries are emerging economies and developing countries. So this is a very serious development and of course, this will uh, potentially also have a lot of negative impact on a lot of the things that we have achieved during the last decades. The World Bank yesterday in the report that many of you probably have seen said that if we don't put the right measures in place to fight this in the developing world, we can see 60 million new people entering extreme poverty this year. And for the first time in two decades, we will see also the global poverty rate uh, increasing. The latest numbers from the bank is also quite grim, uh, contraction of 5% in the global economy this year. But this platform is about action, is about the public-private partnership. We have 1,100 organizations, companies on board. We have more than 40 concrete projects now that are addressed uh, to fight uh, the impact of uh, this uh, pandemic. Very, very pleased to again uh, see you, uh, Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan. Last time we had the dialogue was in Davos. We did not expect that this uh, new decade was going to start um, this way. Thank you for joining us and also thank you for being willing to share with us how this uh, situation looks uh, from Islamabad, from Pakistan, and the measures that you are uh, taking. Prime Minister, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, well, <clears throat> let me just say that the experience of the developed world is completely different to what we are facing uh, in the developing world. Uh, and in countries like uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, specifically the Indian subcontinent, our experience is, is, is somewhat different. Firstly, the, sort of the, the, the speed at which COVID-19 spread in Europe and in the United States, uh, it is, we are not experiencing that same sort of speed. On the other hand, we are still uh, facing rising number of cases. And we still haven't reached our peak here. Uh, but from day one, the difference between, say, what, what we've seen in Europe and in the United States, and in fact, even in China, the difference is that we had to face this twin challenge. One was to stop, stem the growth of uh, the virus, so hence the lockdown. And, but the, the bigger challenge, and increasingly in our countries, the bigger challenge is how to mitigate the effects of lockdown on, on our population with this rising poverty. Uh, to give uh, people an example of what we, what we are facing in Pakistan, and I think it's the same sort of situation in India and possibly in Bangladesh. Uh, we, in Pakistan, we have uh, 25 million uh, workers who are either daily wages or get paid weekly or are self-employed. So when we lock down and lock down like the whole of the world to stop the spread of the virus, 
all these people became unemployed. And when you're talking about 25 million workers, you're talking about 25 million families. And actually, it has affected around about almost 120, 150 million people. And these 120 and 50 million people face stark poverty. They're, they're, uh, unless uh, the, 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 the men or, or the women who were working, unless they work, the, they cannot feed their families. So what we did was, uh, and I'm very proud of my government, we came up with this cash transfer program. And we uh, touched 15 million families. So far, we have touched 15 million families with uh, cash transfers. And this is what's mitigated the effects of the lockdown. But this is only a short-term solution. So therefore, despite the rising cases in our country, we have decided to go uh, and, and uh, ease the lockdown. We have started to uh, open up our businesses, our uh, construction industry, uh, so that people can find employment. Because there's no way the government can, uh, can uh, give handouts to so many people. And because of this huge numbers of the informal economy, the only way we can uh, uh, reach our people is by, by uh, allowing them to work. So here we face this dilemma. One, we still have a problem of growing cases, and we still have to be careful about uh, the spread of the virus. But on the other hand, unless we open up our economy, we, we have millions facing starvation. Uh, and this is not the problem faced in the, in the Western countries, but the Western countries also face this problem, this balance between now saving the economy and at the same time worrying about, even if the cases are going down, they're worrying about in case there's a spike. So the way forward we have, uh, this year we have, uh, as, a, as a country, as a nation, we realize that we have to live with this virus, Un at least until a, 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 a vaccine comes out. We feel that this year we just have to learn how to live with it and balance this. So to balance this, what we have, uh, what we have uh, raised a, a volunteer force of one million volunteers who will help the administration, because the administration is already overburdened. The, the law enforcement agencies, they've become overburdened by trying to uh, impose the lockdown. So we decided that the only way is that have a volunteer force, let the ad administration do the normal work and the police while this, uh, this volunteer force goes and encourages people to not, to, uh, uh, not to have gatherings. And when they go to work, have these SOPs so that they at least try and keep the social distancing. So um, this year, we feel that uh, uh, we have a very tough year to balance this act. We have uh, suffered uh, economically. Just before this, uh, this COVID-19 hit us, we had managed to balance our uh, twin budgets, the current account uh, uh, deficit and the uh, fiscal deficit. After a very painful series of reforms, we had just about balanced and were thinking of the economy of uh, growing. And so it, it's hit our, us at the worst time. But what we feel is that uh, the coming coming year is not just a challenge for Pakistan. We all know it's a global challenge. And uh, what we feel is that there's, there has to be a, a lot more uh, interaction between the countries in dealing with this challenge than has been so far. Understandably, because when it hit the countries, it's quite unprecedented, the measures that took. So the, every country looked inside, became insular. But I feel eventually it's, uh, we are all connected and the response has to be global. There has to be a, a, a way of picking up countries which are, which are struggling right now, and especially in the developing world. I've spoken to uh, the Ethiopian prime minister, the, uh, the Egyptian president, Nigerian prime minister. All of them are facing similar problems to what we are facing, falling exports, the export orders have gone down because uh, obviously the, the, the problems uh, faced by the global community. But also additionally, 
We faced the uh, problems of falling remittances. Our country depended a lot, a, lot of, a lot on remittances from the Gulf countries, and because of oil prices uh, crashing, that has had an effect uh, on, um, on um, uh, our workers, our, our remittances. So we are, I, I guess everyone is facing the challenges, but uh, we have geared up. Uh, economically, we've got our think, think tanks working on how we're going to deal with the coming uh, year. At the same time, we have, uh, we have a very good uh, developed a system of a national command and control center. And the whole idea is that every day we, we, the whole idea of the center is to balance the whole thing. They watch where the yeah. cases are growing, how they, we are going to deal with them, isolate individual areas where, where there is a fear of spreading, and at the same time, how we can keep our economy going. So I guess uh, this is what the world community faces. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, for sharing this. And uh, I think we are all uh, have a lot of respect uh, for uh, the very different, uh, difficult dilemmas leaders are now in between lives and livelihoods. And especially in uh, poor countries, uh, this is a really a huge task. And as you underlined, when we met in Davos, we thought the global economy was going to grow with 3% this year. And now it's going to contract with 5%. So this will have huge, huge uh, impact. And I, I guess that uh, the global debt situation is also uh, something that is um, uh, really uh, a serious issue uh, for Pakistan. I'm going to go uh, to um, the Development and Trade Minister of uh, the Netherlands. But if you can very shortly, Prime Minister, just in one minute, say something about uh, the global uh, debt situation and also the special situation um, for developing countries, um, because there is a discussion about a global plan here. Uh, you know, G20 countries have come up with uh, uh, a, a debt relief. Uh, they've just come up with a policy of debt relief, but it it needs to be, there need to be more details and more work on this. But let, let me just put it this way. A uh, lot of the developing world faces the situation where because of their debt servicing, they, their fiscal space has contracted. They don't have enough space actually to cope with this, uh, this challenge that of health facilities because the biggest problem caused by COVID is our, it's overwhelmed the health facilities, the hospitals. So therefore, um, the reason why there should be a debt relief and the G20 has, uh, is looking into it, uh, because we need that fiscal space now to divert resources towards health and also to environment. Uh, and unfortunately, right now, that space is not there. And as I said, I spoke to the uh, heads of Nigeria, Ethiopia, and uh, Egypt, all of them face this uh, similar situation to us. Yeah. No, thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister. And what you're really alluding to is kind of a bridge, because there is an uh, imminent need for stimulus to make sure uh, that things are also working until uh, growth is back. I think this is a nice segue also to Sigrid Karg, because Sigrid, uh, you're not only the trade minister of the Netherlands, but you're also the development minister. Uh, we'll come back to the situation in your country, but what Prime Minister Khan was alluding to her was uh, the G20 is looking at a way uh, to also make sure uh, that people are fed, that things don't totally <laughs> stop no, in the immediate uh, crisis. Uh, this is what stimulus is needed for, and the debt relief will uh, possibly give a bit of relief there. Any thoughts on this? Yes, no, thank you very much, Borg. And indeed, I was very inspired by, uh, uh, saddened and inspired, of course.
وزیر اعظم عمران خان عالمی اقتصادی فورم کے کووڈ ایکشن پلیٹ فارم سے خطاب کر رہے تھے وزیر اعظم عمران خان نے کہا کہ ترقی یافتہ اور ترقی پذیر ممالک میں کے حالات یکسر مختلف ہیں کرونا وائرس نے پاکستان بھارت بنگلہ دیش میں وائرس اتنی تیزی سے نہیں پھیلا جتنی تیزی سے یہ مغربی ممالک میں پھیلا ہے مغرب اور ہمیں فرق یہ ہے کہ ہمیں بھوک سے بھی نپٹنا ہے ہمیں یہ بھی چیلنج درپیش ہے پاکستان میں اب تک ایک کروڑ بیس لاکھ سے زیادہ خاندانوں میں نقد امدادی رقوم تقسیم کی جا چکی ہیں پاکستان نے کیا اقدامات کیے ہیں کرونا وائرس کے حوالے سے وزیراعظم عمران خان نے ورلڈ اکنومک فورم میں ایکسپرٹس کو آگاہ کیا اور ان کے سوالات کے بھی جواب دیئے وزیراعظم عمران خان نے کہا کہ کروڑوں لوگوں کو بھوک سے بچانے کے لیے ہمیں معیشت کو کھولنا ضروری ہے اس کے ساتھ سر وزیراعظم نے جی ٹونٹی ممالک سے کرزوں میں ریلیف کے حوالے سے اپنی اپیل کو بھی دور آیا کہ ہمیں بہت سے ایسے ممالک ترقی پذیر ممالک ہیں جنہیں پاکستان جیسے مسائل کا سامنا ہے پاکستان میں دھائی کروڑ سے زیادہ لوگ یومیہ اجرت پر کام کر رہے ہیں اور اس طرح سے کرونا وائرس کی وجہ سے دھائی کروڑ خاندان کرونا وائرس سے براہ راست متاثر ہوئے ہیں وزیراعظم عمران خان نے ٹائگر فورس کا بھی ذکر کیا جس میں انہوں نے کہا کہ ہمیں انتظامیہ کے ساتھ مل کر ہم نے رضاکار فورس میدان میں اتاری ہے تاکہ متاثرہ لوگوں تک امداد بہم پہنچائی جا سکے وزیراعظم عمران خان نے کہا کہ ہماری حکومت نے احساس ایمرجنسی کیش پرگیم کا بھی آغاز کیا تاکہ وہ لوگ جو متاثر ہوئے ہیں کرونا وائرس کی وجہ سے جن کا روزگار چھن گیا ہے ان تک نقد امدادی رقوم پہنچائی جا سکے اور اس میں شفافیت کے ساتھ سر وزیراعظم عمران خان نے معیشت کو درپیش چیلنجز کے حوالے سے بھی ذکر کیا اس سال پاکستان کے لیے مشکل ہوگا وزیراعظم عمران خان نے کہا کہ اپنے بہت ساری اصلاحات کی تھیں جس کی وجہ سے پاکستان کے جو کرزوں کا حجم ہے اس حوالے سے بھی انہوں نے ذکر کیا کہ اس میں جو ہمارا سرکولر ڈیٹ ہے اس میں کمی آئی لیکن جو اصلاحات ہیں ان کو ایگزیکیوٹ کرنے کے لیے کرونا وائرس کے وجہ سے یہ سال مشکل ثابت ہوا ہے تمام ممالک جو اس سے متاثر ہوئے ہیں انہیں مل کر ایک حکمت عملی اختیار کرنا ہوگی تاکہ کرونا وائرس پر قابو پایا جا سکے اور اس کی وجہ سے جو بھی اثرات سامنے آئیں گے جو نتائج سامنے آئیں گے ان سے ہم مل کر نبرد آزمہ ہو سکیں